So welcome to the latest podcast with me, Mabon Apquinvor and Liz Saville-Roberts. Um, welcome, uh, Liz. How are you over there in Evin? Evin is, is, is really nice. It's almost unfortunate to be indoors. Um, I'm going to have to go back to, to London next week, which isn't something that I'm looking forward to. I think one of the things that we've proved is that the hybrid parliament, where we can vote and we can contribute to debates and all sorts of activities, works just as well from home. Uh, I'll waste 12 hours in the car driving down. Mm. Uh, I think the Parliament should be showing, the UK Parliament should be showing um, how other workplaces could equally work in a different way. And we shouldn't be tied to a, a crumbling 19th century museum, which isn't fit for purpose or for self, social distancing. And you can remain with your family and your constituents as well while uh, remaining in Nevin. Um, and, and also joining us is Owain Mavir, Owain Mavir, uh, former head teacher in School of Traith in, in Barmouth and still working in uh, education. Also uh, organiser for the session of Arundel uh, Welcome Owain. Uh, Mavir, Hi, sorry. Hi, thanks Marvon. Hi Liz. Yeah, uh, how are things in Dolgachia with you? Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, I, I never stop. I never get tired of the view out of my window, but as Liz said, in a minute I'll get out and enjoy it, enjoy the warmth. It's beautiful, yeah. And, and how's Dolgachia been th during this lockdown? Um, I, I think the the, the 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 best way to describe Dolgachia is sensible, really. Uh, um, it's been very quiet, uh, I'm glad to say, and, and, and people are, are keeping to the rules and... and uh, are uh, getting on with life as best they can. Uh, you know, lots of businesses have set up uh, takeaway services and so forth, which keeps them going in some way. Uh, and uh, people are making the most of things as they are. Uh, and uh, it's, as I said, it's quiet here, uh, which we welcome, I think, in the way things are at the moment. Well, that, that's good to know. And um, one of the things we want to discuss um, mainly in this uh, issue today was was education. Um, there's a lot of talk, uh, certainly in England, about easing the lockdown and opening some of the schools. Less so here in Wales. Of course, education is devolved. Um, now, reopening the schools and letting children back into the schools, especially primary education, seems to me a difficult task you know children running around um how do you control children social distancing from your experience Mav, is that something that you think schools could could do and cope with well um first of all i think the way they've gone about it in england is, is totally wrong um i don't think there's been much thought put into it really it's it's, it's a case of getting uh, well, I might be wrong, but, but the way I think it is, is, is a way of getting childminders into schools so that people can get back to work, uh, you know, mm. let's be honest. Uh, um, and talking about reception and the one and two children getting back, it's, it's, it's irresponsible, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, I, I know the science tells us that children don't suffer, but they can carry this virus, obviously. Mm. And, and uh, what happens when a child falls down, hurts himself? Does the teacher um, assume social distancing and let him be? You know, these children at this age, they want the, they want the comforting arm of the child, or the teacher or, 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 the, or the assistant. Uh, and, you know, they are also, uh, they're in each other's faces during the day. I mean, Today's curriculum isn't about sitting behind the desk as they might have done in reception in Eton or wherever he went to. Uh, but you know, it, it's not about, it's about investigating, it's about playing, it's about social contact, basically. Uh, uh, and uh, I can't see any way that you can assume um, social distancing at that age. Uh, yeah. and, and, and the curriculum here in Wales means you, in the younger years you learn through play. Of course you do, yeah. yeah. Uh, so how Probably can that be maintained? You know, well, that, yeah, and and it, is, it, it, it simply can't. It simply can't. You know, I, that, That's what I said, but there's no, been no thought to it. And 
uh, and you know, I, I think in, even in England, the foundation stage is in for for one year in, in reception. So you know, what kind of but, but, but these people, they've no they've no experience of how education in the real world works. I don't know. They might be sitting in a desk formally, as happened in in Victorian times in some schools. Still, I I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure in the private sector, I'm not certain, but, you know, it's certainly a non-starter for young children, for very young children here in Wales. Mm. But, but thinking about education, um, you know, new innovative ideas are being brought forward about um, uh, learning, <coughs> distance learning. Um, Liz, what are your thoughts on distance learning? And I know you, you've been working in that sector previously. Um, is that something that we can look at more and is being developed at the moment? Well, I, I think we've already noticed this. It's in the, 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 the furnace of an emergency that we come up with our new ideas and that they actually they get put into place and they get used. And there's, 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 you, you, there's less of the resistance that you would have at other times. And we're certainly seeing, oh, we're having this conversation now on Zoom. Um, we've, we've seen our courts are using more with video technology. I used to work in further education and I was in charge of distant learning for, um, from the, the college in, um, in, in Dorgetla, as it happened, calling Mary on Duvor, uh, to a number of, of secondary schools in Wales so that they could teach the more, um, the less what you call the less conventional A-level subjects through the medium of Welsh. And I think it, we, it's evidently there's a real expectation now in education that more is done on, online, more is done through video, more is done in, in this sort of communication. Now, obviously, on the one hand, that's absolutely fantastic um, because it means that we can actually reach out to people and we can offer them learning in a way that they're not going to, it's not going to happen otherwise. At the same time, you have to make sure that everybody is safe. You have to make sure that the learners are safe, that the teachers are safe, that the environment, that no one's going to be accused of anything that's inappropriate. But we can really take these opportunities to use this now. But we need them to think further. I mentioned the courts. And one thing that worries me, of course, is that we're rushing ahead with something because it's convenient maybe a bit like using teachers as childminders rather than actually being there as educationalists. We're using something that's convenient without necessarily knowing what its effect is. And we need to take a step, step, step back, look at those sorts of learners that we know this works with very well. Say the academic learners, because it gives them more freedom. They take responsibility for their own learning. But at the same time, let's not fool ourselves that this then will be suitable for other sorts of learners with other sorts of courses say people who are following uh, vocational, highly practical courses, how are we going to cope with them as well? So we're at this stage now when perhaps we're beginning to look about how we're moving ahead. We need to look sensibly at what the triggers are that we're able to move ahead, but that we're actually using this time effectively to make sure that we reach out to people. But one of the things I really must say, I think, and I've been, been trying to talk as much as I can with young people in the constituency, that different people's experiences of the lockdown do vary immensely. And there are you know, real issues that people worry about what their future is going to be, whether they're going to be able to go to university, what their grades will be, and whether we're missing out on some mental health issues with young people as well. So I think you know, we, we, we really had to be alert to different people's experiences and how, and how we can reach them. Yeah, and um, you mentioned there the online uh, learning, distant learning, of course, we've touched on. Merv, is that possible for everybody? Uh, I'm thinking primarily about the, the primary sector. Um, and we know how the broadband provision in this constituency isn't brilliant. Is distant learning a, a real option for, for all? Well, it is happening. I mean, uh, Google Classrooms have been set up in every school you know, uh, over, over the last 10 weeks. Um, obviously, I would imagine it's, 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 it's working differently in, in, in all establishments. Um, but... There is a danger, as Liz mentioned, the vocational courses. There's also a danger of, of uh, creating uh, two groups, if you like, or two classes, uh, the haves and the have-nots, because, you know, I'm aware of, of lots of children who simply don't have computers at home. Mm. And, or, or, uh, and whether the signal is, is good or not, they don't have Wi-Fi, you know, end of regardless of how of the strength of the signal in the area so you know the, there is a danger really that 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 a group are going to be left behind here uh, uh, and uh, 
you know, it, it's important that we that we try to work our way to to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we don't think that it's possible at the moment to get children back to school. That may not be a realistic prospect because of social <coughs> distancing, but it's also difficult to put into practice distant learning because of geographic difficulties, um, lack of, of Wi-Fi, lack of, of computer equipment. So we really need to see the government modelling this now thinking how they're going to roll out education. I think it's, you know, we, we, we mentioned the early years, didn't we? Uh, and, and, and I think possibly we, we need to think about if we are going to get groups of children into school, then we, we need to select groups, possibly yeah. children who are, are transferring from primary to secondary. We're talking about year six there, possibly children, uh, students who have, uh, who are, you know, we'll be doing GCSEs next year or, 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 or whatever, you know, I think, it, I think those, there are certain groups and also um, it has been mentioned that children, you know, that they're, they're out of the Welsh language environment at the moment and uh, it's important that they do hear because at the moment, lots of children, unfortunately, the, the, only, the only time they hear Welsh uh, and speak Welsh is in school. So it's very, very important to, to get that aspect of the curriculum going as well. So I, I think it needs to be done. It needs to be done carefully. And also, I, I did mention that children without Wi-Fi and so forth and without computers, well, it's very important that we get those back to school as well. Yeah. 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 And alongside that, that we actually push to make sure that we've got de decent Wi-Fi. Now is the time to just close yeah. those links, make sure yeah. those links are made up, and yeah. to make sure that every family that, that hasn't got one otherwise actually has the piece of equipment that they can use. And yeah. that no reason as to why that doesn't happen, that has to happen now. Of course, Liz, uh, a lot of your uh, casework over the last few years will have been around lack of broadband provision, um, complaints about BT uh, communities not having broadband access. Uh, th that's still the case in many communities in, in Duver Mariano. Well, we, we do know that, that, that there are many homes in Duver Mariano where you still can't get Wi-Fi. I'll, I'll give Openreach a shout out for now because when there have been, when, when the links, you know, when the connections have gone down, they've been out and fixing things very quickly because we had some panics about that at the beginning. If you can imagine elderly people who were trying to get their slots on the supermarket orders, that was a real source of concern. Yes. But nonetheless, I think you know, now is the time. We've had all those reasons, the different interests as to why something couldn't be done in the past. Now is when central government steps in and makes sure it happens. Hmm. And we move ahead from it rather than looking at excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. You know, it's an interesting discussion, certainly around education. Um, we won't be able to resolve it here, obviously, but that's that's the discussions that they're having in government, and that, those are the decisions they're having to make there. Um, but, but the other thing, of course, uh, thinking about having you, Mavir, here is you being an organizer for the Session Vaur, uh, a long standing um, folk and world music uh, festival in Dolgeche. Of course, you've had to cancel not only the Session Vaur, but you had a beer festival organised in Dolgeche for April as well. That was cancelled. What, what are your plans now, thinking ahead um, about that slot in July when the Session Vaur would have been? What's going to happen now? Yeah, well, as you say, we were all geared up, really, uh, to announce our lineup in, in the annual beer festival. And, and then nothing. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we had to cancel, like every other event, like every other festival, uh, uh, and, and it's very, very sad, really. Um, but there we are, you know, we, we have to get on with it um, and make the best of a uh, sorry situation, really. But uh, we, we hope to put something on this summer uh, on the internet, you know, we hope to use technology. Uh, and uh, have some performances of right. thoughts by individuals, by soloists, by groups. I'm not certain. It depends where the technology takes us, really. Uh, um, we are in discussions with, 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 with some of the broadcasters as well with the possibility because, you know, there, there, there is uh, footage uh, uh, and recordings of performances going back over a number of years. Uh, and whether we can utilize some of those uh, remains to be seen but yeah we we hope something will happen uh and uh, uh, you know and, and it, if it's only just to give 
the the artists a stage uh, for them to contact their uh, their fans mm. uh, because at the end of the day we we're a festival uh, that are you know there are larger festivals than us that have had to cancel and that have possibly lost lost a lot more money than we have. Uh, but the artists have lost everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, at, at a time like this, they're all self-employed and it's their living, and they've lost their living. And uh, you know, we have to do whatever we can to help them. Yeah, and, and yeah, as you say, the artists, you know, Seshavar brings in a, a huge chunk of money to the Dolgechai area um, in July every year. So there's that impact on the local economy, but the artists being self-employed, we, we saw Tom Lewis, the artist from, the musician from Tywin, <coughs> lives in Cardiff, talking to the Guardian about the impact on his livelihood, losing out on hundreds of pounds in the first few weeks. You know, you've got roadies, uh, um, sound technicians, stage managers, all of these people are, have lost out on, on a huge amount of money, haven't they? Well, yeah, uh, in, in, on the Welsh scene, uh, some, not all, are, are obviously professional uh, on the Welsh scene. But, 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 you know, you talk about a band like Callan, for example, mm. who had to cut off their, 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 their a tour in the US. You know, and, and it's, I think it was their fifth tour of the US in three years. They are starting to break through in the US and, and become a major artist there. And all of a sudden, bang, you know, the, the tour is cancelled and they're back to teaching online or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> to make, trying to make ends meet that way, you know. And there are others, obviously, uh, you know, who are in that state. And, 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 and as you say, you mentioned technicians. Uh, with sound engineering company, for example, their diaries being wiped clean for the summer, yeah. uh, and you know it means that they are all they're all self-employed, so they you know they have to make ends meet like everybody else. Yeah, and, and these people can't be furloughed, Liz. Th these are self-employed people, aren't they? Yes, these are self-employed people, and also then you're looking at how much um, earnings they've had in the past. And it does seem to be, you know, the, the, so far it's been the government, the UK government hasn't found a way of, of, of supporting them particularly effectively. We are hoping another announcement today because many MPs have, have raised the plight of people who are involved in, in the arts. Um, can, you know, it, it's, it's wonderful to hear that we'll be doing something through technology, but you have to try and find a way to actually give some people some sort of earnings at this time. Mm -hmm. I, again, I, I know of somebody who, you know, an opera singer who's off, offering teaching singing lessons through the internet. Which is a great initiative, but they need more than that. And again, you know, for us in Wales, this is the Welsh cultural scene is the only Welsh cultural scene that there is. Mm. We stand to lose something so precious. Um, you know, everyone's livelihood is important, but we. This is particular. Um, you know, Dolgellau is one of the highlights in the summer of a particular thing that is just unique to Wales. Yes, and, um, yes, and, and we we'll have to work on it. The Stead Road has been cancelled as well, and, and as as you said, all festivals, all social gatherings and events like that have been cancelled. So, um, yeah, and, 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 and you know, the, I know we're, we're we're a long way away, but you have to place some doubt on even next year's festivals. Yeah, it's, you know, it's 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 um, it, uh, we are talking now uh, uh, as the situation as it is, but you know, the the expectancy is that there'll be another spike in the in in winter, uh, possibly more, who knows, you know, um, so one cannot confidently, although obviously we hope, but we, you cannot confident, confidently say that, that, that things will be back to normal even next year. But, but out of this crisis, you know, we're seeing a lot of innovation. So we're, we're waiting to see what the session of does this July. Uh, watch this space. When will that announcement be made and where will you make it? Well, uh, it'll be made on the normal, on social media and on, on the website. You know, it depends really what we can put together. But we hope to do something. Yeah, yeah well, uh, that's good to hear at least. Um, Diolch and thank you both for, for joining uh, us in this uh, podcast. I uh, hope you're all very well and uh, we'll see everybody uh, next week again. Diolch and thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello.